Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and recently I was helping a friend work in Silhouette's uh, studio software and realized that there must be other people out there that need the same type of assistance. So I'm going to do a series of videos, very, very basic videos, showing how to do different things within Silhouette Studio software. My software is the Business Edition, so I'm sure I have some features that are not available to uh, those using just the basic software. I'll try to begin with very simple tasks. So let's just go ahead and get started. In this first tutorial, I'll be showing you how to remove the background from a JPEG image, and I'll be using this image from Tara Kamiya. I will link to the image in the description box below. So first of all, you need to install Silhouette Studio on your computer. So I'm gonna start from a place of, you've already installed the software, and you are able to actually open the software. And also, I am working on a Windows 10 system. If you're working on a Mac, some of the instructions that I provide may be a little different. So to get started, I want to make some stickers out of a graphic file that I purchased from someone on Etsy. So say you have a graphic file that you've purchased or that you found somewhere or that you just have and you want to pull that graphic into uh, Silhouette and work with it. To get that image into the Silhouette Studio software, this is what I recommend. There are other ways to do this, but this is the way I do it. I, when you open Silhouette Studio, you, you'll have a blank artboard and it will look something like this. Go to File, Open, or Control-O, and navigate through to where the file is that you want to work with. That's a key thing. If it's something that you've downloaded to your computer, you need to know where that file is downloaded to. A lot of systems automatically put everything in downloads, if you have not changed that setup on your computer, it's probably going to put it there or if you didn't select a specific place to download the file to. I suggest that you make your own folders on your computer and download things to specific folders. For instance, I have an external hard drive. All of the digital files that I purchased, I put on this hard drive. So I'm working with a Terra Kamaya image. I hope I'm saying that right. Image or Terra Kamiya, I think it is. Kamiya. Um, I'm working with her Starbucks Tumblr. And if you're interested in this, then I will leave a link in the description box below. But I'm going to be making stickers with her Tumblr, the holographic Tumblr file. So I've navigated to my hard drive and to her folder on my system, and I found the Tumblr. So I'm going to click on that and then click OK. So now it's open. This is an unnecessary step, but this is what I do. I select the graphic, and I copy it. So that's edit, copy, or control C. I usually just do control C. And then go back to my blank artboard and paste it onto the artboard. Paste is edit, paste, or control V. Then I go back and I close the original document. This really doesn't matter unless, and I'm not gonna save any changes. That step doesn't really matter for a graphic like this, if I'm opening up a JPEG, a ping, a PDF, something like that. It really does matter if you're open, opening a Silhouette Studio file, a native Silhouette Studio file. So if your file name says .studio at the, at the end of the file name, let's see if I can show you an example. 
um, there's some folder with studio. So I have my view set to detail. So it shows me the name, date, the type of file, and the size. So this is how I know whether it's a studio file or not. So here it says silhouette studio document. If I set it a different way, it would also show the extension name of, okay, file name extensions. I'm going to tell it to show that. Okay. So now you can see that it says .studio3. That's a studio file. It says .studio3. So if I could just double click on that, it's going to open it automatically in Studio because there's no other um, software on my system that will open that type of file. So back to my original point, <laughs> this is just something I was playing around with a while ago. So I open this here and say I want to make changes to this. Well, if I make changes here and adjust this file and I save this file, then this will be my new file. But if I wanted to keep that original, say if it's a file that I purchased from somewhere and I want to keep a copy of the original, then I need to, if I want to work with something inside of that original file, I would take whatever it is, copy it, control C or edit copy and paste it onto a new artboard so that I can work with it there and maintain my original file. So I would close this back down and say, no, don't save any of those changes because I want to keep my original document. It's not, you're not always guaranteed to be able to go back and re-download something. So to me, it's always a good idea to keep your original. So I've gone through that whole speech of things you should do when you're working with files. So let's go ahead and work with this file. So I just did this scalloped thing to show an example. So now I'm just going to delete that and move on with what we were doing. Okay, so I've imported Tara's cup onto my artboard. And if I slide it over here, you'll see that it is not a transparent image. As far as I know, JPEGs do not come as transparent files. Only pings do, or GIFs, or SVG files. JPEGs aren't transparent. So, and this was a JPEG file. If I wanted my sticker to just be a rectangular shape like this, then I could just go from here and make my stickers. However, I want my sticker to have the actual shape of the cup. So, what I need to do to get to that is either make my cut line around the cup, I could just do that, or I can remove the background and make my cup line around the cup. I prefer to remove the background because if I want to use this some other in some other way to make a dashboard as part of a layer on a dashboard or whatever the case may be, then I've already removed that background and I don't have to worry about it again. I also remove the background at the full size of the file. So I'm not going to shrink this down to the size that I want it to be. I'm going to work with it at its original size and go from there. So first I'm going to select the graphic. Then I'm going to go over here to the open trace panel icon. Oops clicked it too many times. Then I'm going to use the select trace area. Click that. Then I'm going to take my cursor and select the whole area of the image that I want to keep. So this is what it's going to show up as. And I'm going to have to increase the threshold. What you want is for the outside of whatever image you're wanting to cut out cut away from the background or select from the background you want the yellow to go all the way around that image you want it to be as solid as possible around the edge it doesn't have to be filled in completely on the inside but we want this edge the outer edge to be covered with yellow 
So I'm going to increase the threshold. And sometimes it takes a little while. And we want it as true to the shape of, see I went too much and it made it bigger and expanded, so we don't need it to be at 100%. You want it to be as true to the shape of the graphic as possible. So I think I'm good there at 80. Then I'm going to come down here under Trace Style and do Trace and Detach. What that's going to do is remove the selected object from the background. So let's do this. Click on that. It takes a few. Now when you first, when it's finished, it doesn't really look like it's done anything. To check to see if everything is okay, if it did what I wanted it to do, I select the background. I just click somewhere in the background and pull it over. You see here? So it leaves me with just the shape of the graphic that I want to keep. So I can just get rid of this and delete it. One thing that I didn't say before is when you move this, your graphic over to the new untitled file, go ahead and save it. I didn't save um, mine at first. I should have done that because you never know what could happen. Your computer could just crash. Your power could go off, depending on what type of computer you're on. Your battery could die. So saving periodically is a good idea. So I'm going to save this right back into Terra, my Terra folder on my external hard drive. And I'm going to just call it Terra's Starbucks cup. Starbucks cup. And let's see, I'm going to put stickers on there too because I'm going to turn this into stickers. That way I give it as much of a descriptive name as possible so that two weeks from now or a month from now when I forgot what I named this file but I know what's in the file, if I do a search on my hard drive, then I can find it a little easier and I'm not having to go and click through a million different folders looking for it. So you can give you give your file names a descriptive file name. So if I wanted to find Terra stuff or if I want to find anything on my computer that says Starbucks, then this would, you know, come up. I hope that helps. Oh, and another thing, I also work off of the main art board over here on the gray background so that I can tell the difference when I'm removing the background. So if I'm over here, for instance, and I've I've removed the background and I take this background out of the way. I can't really tell if it cut the background out properly or not because it's a white artboard. So if I have it on the gray here, I can tell that there's no little white pieces left and that it did cut it out correctly. So you can get rid of this if you want to or you can just leave it off of the artboard over there it's not hurting anything but I'm gonna go ahead and delete it I'm gonna save just to be on the safe side and that's file save or file save as if you want to give it a different name and make another copy once you've saved it then you can just hit control s and you can use that to save as you go so I'm a control s person I try to use the keyboard commands as much as possible, the ones that I know. So I hope you've learned how to remove the background from a graphic in Silhouette Studio. That's it for this tutorial. There will be more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And make sure you click the little bell so that you'll receive notifications each time I upload a new video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!